Hello guys and welcome back to the second episode of Building Brighton. Since you guys left us, we have played a lot of matches and we have done pretty okay, but could have been a lot better. But we're sitting pretty in 13th place in the Premier League right now, which isn't anything to complain about. After the Wolves game, um, we couldn't redeem ourselves and get a win against Aston Villa, and we lost on penalties, which actually knocked us out of the Carabao Cup, which the uh, board wasn't too happy with, um, with uh, them being uh, expecting us to reach the fourth w round, so obviously I failed that. So straight off the bat, it's not great from uh, the performance side of things, but then we went on a three-run of... Uh, uh, sorry, we beat Burnley, and then we went on our three-game loss streak. But they were all games that we played pretty well, especially the Man City and Tottenham games. The Southampton one was a bit disappointing. But then we managed to get two wins in a row leading up to this game against Chelsea and Sheffield United, which are two really good results, especially considering how good Chelsea are and how good Chelsea, uh, Sheffield United are in real life. But obviously, in uh, Football Manager, their form is very different to what it is in real life. But we are going to go straight into this match against Norwich. I'll show you guys the side that I have picked for this match. And it is um, this side. All of these players have been playing pretty well for us. Apart from Trossard and um, Jay. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. It's just going to be disrespectful. Um, because unfortunately Gyro and March are both injured. Who are our main left and right midfielders. So um Hopefully they come back soon, with March being out for two to four weeks and Jairo being out for three to six. We might have to deal with this for a few more games to come. And I know that Trossard apparently can't play there, but I'm training him there right now. Don't know why it's changed from that. I'm going to change that right back to uh, there. That's the second time it's done that for me. Um, and if you actually look at his stats in that position, he's absolutely fine. All of them work in his favour. So I don't see why he won't play well for us there, and I've played him there previously, and he's been absolutely fine. So we're going to stick with it, and if we don't win the game, I'm sure you guys will all tell me it's because we played Trossard in that position. But we're going to jump straight into the game, and I'll meet you guys when it's ready to kick off. Going straight into the game against Norwich, uh, they have a pretty solid side, and I feel like we're pretty evenly matched, so this will show really uh, how we're going to do this season. And straight off the bat, we do have a chance with Norwich bringing it up in a red kit, which is very unfamiliar for me watching Norwich. I don't think I've ever seen them wear red in real life, but nonetheless, they're wearing red today and we all have to deal with it. Actually, yellow's not even a kit clash, so I don't know why they're wearing red, but yeah, we'll stick with it. And they're playing it pretty well in between each other, and they haven't lost it yet, so I am thinking this will be Norwich's chance. And they bang it from long range, but luckily Pacheco is there to tip it over the bar and only give them a corner, which is certainly a lot better than a goal. As they whip it in, and that's probably going to be the end of the highlight as we just run out the chance, unless we can go on a wee bit of a counter-attack with Jay running up the line, crossing the ball in, and it doesn't quite reach one of our players, and that is the end of the highlight. If you take a look at the stats, we're doing all right. Uh, one shot to their three, which isn't ideal, and only 40% position. It's not bad, but it's not exactly where we want to be. And uh, Norwich are actually doing quite well in the league right now, sitting all the way up in 8th with us down in 13th. They are a bit better than us um, performance-wise, but obviously being at home, and with the two games on the trot that we have right now, I don't see any reason why we can't come away with a great result in this match. And we are coming back into it with uh, four shots to their four now. It's a pretty even affair. It could go either way right now, but I don't know if we'll have another chance as the as the clock runs down to end the half. Um, with only five minutes left, I might tell the boys to uh, show some passion just for the last two minutes and see if that does anything. Doubt it will, but yes, that's it for half time. We're going to tell the boys that. Mm, we're going to tell the boys that we've been unlucky so far, and they reacted pretty well to that, and let's go straight back into the second half. Nothing happening straight out of the box, but we do already have a shot on them, which is what we want to see straight out of the second half team talk. As we all know, I am the tactical genius when it comes to second half team talks, and they always end up reacting well after them. As Trossard is taking what I've said on board, and uh, 
tries to score a goal from long range but can't quite get it on target. But it's promising signs, it's what we want. Any chance is a good chance for us at this point. And it is coming up to the 60th minute, which is around the time that I start thinking about making a couple of changes, a few tweaks to the system if we need to. But I think right now we are playing a lot better than Norwich. And um, the shots are definitely saying that. I'm not sure if the position is. Yes, it's uh, not really saying that. But um, we're going to keep at it for another few minutes. But yeah, I think it's time to make a change because the game is slowing down now and nothing seems to be happening. Lauren's going to come on from Mope, who has been playing really well for us lately. And um, Moy can come on for Gross just to try and switch it up. And. Um, the attack and midfield area because it doesn't seem to be uh, doing too much right now. Not thinking about making any calls right now, but might demand more now actually. And uh, but we are still creating the shots and uh, the chances just aren't coming our way as uh, the clock runs down and it is probably getting to the point where I'm going to have to start thinking about making those la that last change if I want to really try and get the goal to win the match. But I can't see anyone on the bench that would be able to come on and instantly make that impact. Maybe I should give this <coughs> Basuma a wee run in the team, see if he can do something. Proper's had a pretty good game, and I think that's a little harsh bringing him off. Move Trossard up and see if we can uh, score that goal to get us... The win in the game, and uh, Trossard's knocked it into the back of the net, but I think he was just offside, based off the way that Banner didn't come straight up saying that he scored. And we'll take a look at that replay. Yeah, and he's a fair bit offside there. I think the goalkeeper would have had it covered if he hadn't gotten that touch, so that's definitely a fair call. But good signs, but I think that this is probably going to be the end of it. We're going to go very attacking just for the last few minutes, see if we can create anything. But... As we got 10 seconds to go, I think that's all she wrote. And um, a 0-0 draw against Norwich, I probably would have taken at the very start of this match, but I'm going to tell them that that wasn't good enough, because if you look at the stats, although we didn't start very well, in the end, 20 shots to their four, we really should be scoring at least one goal there, especially with a two-striker system. It's uh, not what you want to see. There is confirmation of those 20 shots to their four, Probably should have gone down as a win for us at the end. But 41% uh, possession, maybe that's something we need to keep an eye on um, as we go into the next match, which is up against a really difficult side in Manchester United. It is at home, so we might have a chance of pulling off another wee upset like we did at Chelsea. Just before the game against Manchester United, I thought I'd tell you guys about our lone players that are absolutely banging it in other places. Knockout has just picked up a knock, uh -huh. um, and apart from that, he has been doing amazingly for Fulham, and he's he peaked at a four-star current ability, and uh, he's got eight goals, five assists in 16 matches, almost getting a goal contribution every single match, and certainly a player to watch out for uh, next season, and I might even recall him uh, at in January, January, sorry, um, McAllister unfortunately can't get a work permit, but is doing really well at Boca, um, so another one to keep an eye on if we can actually make him a part of our side. Tao is doing pretty well as well, as well as Matt Clark. While you guys were gone, uh, Gross has picked up a knock, which has added to our already increasing injury problems. Look at all those reds. I mean, I know some of them are out on loan, but gosh, it's just ridiculously unlucky. Webster's kicked up a fuss about his playing time, and he wants to go out on loan. And I said, yeah, I think that's fair enough. I reckon he's fine to go out on loan. But then White has kicked up a fuss as well, and he's just not happy. So um, I'm going to try and make sure he's not too unhappy, and maybe I'll give him some game time if I have to. Because he's a pretty good young prospect, and I think he will end up being a great player for us one day. But right now, he's not getting in the side above either Dunk or Duffy. They're too good for us. But we're going to jump straight into this game against Manchester United. This is the side that we're going with. I'll drop straight onto a cautious mentality if I have to. But right now, I don't want to go into the game um, just expecting to 
take the pressure if um if we have the chance of you know making it a even affair but we're going to jump straight into that match and uh we'll see you when it's ready to begin and just feast your eyes on that manchester united side that team is worth hundreds of millions just if we can manage to get a draw in this game, even at home, I will take it as a win. They brought in Gerard Delafleu, Del Delafleu, you know who I'm talking about. And he is a very solid player. Um, didn't realise he was actually that good playing at Watford, but uh, he's come to Manchester United and he looks like a pretty tidy signing for them in this uh, save. Right now, nothing's happening. We've got another injury. Oh, for goodness sake. We're going to have to bring on... Uh, Shalito in that winger position. I'll play him as a defensive winger just to add a bit of solidity in defence and um, see if we can bounce back after that disappointing first few minutes. As Shalito does have the ball now, playing it in for Moy, and it looks like we might have the first chance of the game. Or well, maybe I've spoken too soon, but Bernardo still has the ball and he skips past the player and then Done has just put it over the bar, but that's a really good sign from us early on in the game. And I think that, yes, Paul Pogba's picked up a knock, so they had to bring on Fred. That's certainly a change that we want to force. Um, Paul Pogba was a massive threat for us before, and now that he's on the field, we have one less thing to worry about, that's for sure. As uh, they almost scored a free kick, if it wasn't for a great goalkeeping signing, um, we might be a goal down, but into the second half, into half time, sorry. Looks like we're going to be 0-0, uh, but we do have one more chance to end the half as Trossard tries to put it in, and that was so close to making its way to one of our players. Montoya running up, playing it to Shaletto, and that's gone into the, exactly where we want it to go, and Andone has scored just before half-time to put us one goal up. That is sublime from the boys. We were not expecting that against the Manchester United side. There we go, Montoya linking up with his competitor in right-back, who's playing in right-mid right now. Puts a good ball in, and uh, and Dona can't be missing from there as a professional footballer, especially a professional striker. And that's going to put us 1-0 up at half-time, and we're certainly going to take that against this Manchester United side. We'll tell the boys, uh, don't get complacent out there, because we cannot lose this victory. This doesn't come every day. And let's jump straight back into the second half. Straight out the gates, the boys should be coming back in with uh, the same amount of excitement to try and get this win as they were in that first half but uh manchester united have one shot to uh none in the second half and um they do straight away bring off gerard de la and bring on uh juan Mata, who might be a bit past his best in this say so um that's a bit of a positive switch for us but might actually not be the smartest change ever for the manchester united so i'm going to make the first change of the game well Sorry, not the first change of the game. Second change because I forgot. Got another bloody injury. Um, I'm going to bring on this Basuma for Aaron Moy. Realised that um, Brighton actually paid 14 million for this lad last year. So um, I don't know what they're doing with their transfer uh, spending. Buying that guy for 14 million and buying Webster for what, like 18 million or something. Uh, they're just wasting money on young players that aren't probably going to make it and of course <laughs> Juan Mata scores and I'm talking about him being past his best that's just stereotypical football manager me talking down on one of the players and it's making me eat my own words that's so silly I should have never talked smack about him like that and that has put it back on level terms and probably where the game deserves to be I think we do deserve to have that one goal that we had because that chance was created so well. But uh, I don't know if um, we deserve to be um, writing out the game in the last 10 minutes, one goal to the good. So it probably puts a bit of justice on in the game, but we would have loved to have been able to see this one out with that one goal advantage. But it's not over yet. Four minutes to go, and uh, Manchester United all week could get a decisive goal to win the game, but with three minutes of added time left, I think we're just going to be able to take a draw in this one, and that would move us up to 13th place, which is certainly not bad. I think that's exactly where we were at the start of the episode. So, um, 
Yeah, we'll definitely take that. A one-all draw to Manchester United at the start of the game. I did say that I would take a draw against Manchester United at the least. So I can't complain with that. And that is a great way to end the episode. I will be playing quite a few games off camera just like I did before. Hopefully we can get some results against Liverpool and Arsenal. And I'll probably come back sometime around mid to end December. I certainly won't be starting the January transfer window without you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these two draws that you did get to see. Sorry that they weren't more exciting games, although the Manchester United one was a game that I'm happy that you guys were able to see. But until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.